Hello, Monetization Nation. Dave Woodward is the CEO of ClickFunnels, the premier sales funnel software that generates more than $100 million per year and has been used to create more than $1,000 million funnels. In the last episode with Dave, we discussed the benefits of using sales funnels to monetize a business. In today's episode, we're going to discuss how we can create a value ladder for our businesses to guide our customers on the buyer's journey. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business, causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. What are some of the best secrets and strategies for creating and optimizing a successful sales funnel? I think the most important thing is to really understand metrics and do some testing on that. Uh, we always look at uh, the whole idea for, for any funnel is you start off typically with, you know, friends and families kind of going through it or testing it. But the real thing, I don't think you have a real business and still you can start driving paid traffic. So I look at doing a hundred dollars a day in Facebook ads uh, as a test and seeing if you can monetize those ads to where you can just break even. And the first thing I'm always trying to do is, is to break even on, on the ad spend on a weekly basis. And so if you say, you know what, we're going to take on, and again, maybe a hundred dollars is too much. Um, I hundred dollars is kind of what I look at as kind of a minimum so you can get enough draft traffic to really make sure that you're not uh, making changes off of one or two people. But with a hundred people or a hundred, hundred dollars a day, that's some of the main things I take a look at. Uh, the whole key then is you start looking at the metrics going through your funnel, depending on the business or the service that you're in, uh, we take a look at opt-in rates. So a person comes to your site, uh, there's a percentage of the people who should then opt in, whether that opt in is through an email or it's through a purchase on the first end. Um, most of our, we rolled out what we refer to as a two step order form. And so the whole idea behind that is a person, before they buy anything, they're introduced to two steps. The first step is their name and their email address. That way you don't lose that contact. The second step is for them to go ahead and put their, their uh, shipping address and credit card in. From there, then the next thing we typically take a look at is how can, what, what is the value ladder you're going to have inside of, of the actual funnel itself? What's the offer you're going to put together? Um, I always look at trying to create the offer before you create the funnel. And then from that, that kind of determines what type of funnel you're going to create. Uh, the whole idea then is to take a look at um, order form bumps are one of the really kind of secrets that we see. Um, usually you'll find a successful order form bump is typically going to get in the neighborhood of anywhere from like 20 to 30% of the people just clicking on that. And for us, I know that's probably one of the fastest ways of recapturing some of the ad spend and breaking even. Uh, from that, then you then go to the OTO or the one-time offer. And depending on what your product or service is, you can see a conversion that range uh, in the neighborhood of, you know, 10 to 20 percent ish uh, on the high end. But again, if, it, if the numbers work, sometimes a 5% conversion is fine too. Uh, the next thing then obviously is, is typically a second OTO. And you'll find about Second OTO is going to be about a half of whatever the first OTO was. So Let's those are the main things you look at. A little bit these terms that you're talking about so everyone can understand. So when you talk about an order bump, that is an, a second related product, um, very similar to the first product. So maybe you sold a book as your primary initial product, and then you did a one-time offer or an o, or sorry, you did an order bump, um, and that might be the the audiobook version of that book, right? It's something that's highly related um, that, that you would additionally try to sell them. And even though not everybody buys it, enough people do it that you substantially increase your profit per order. And, and then you might have a one-time offer. You want to explain to that, maybe give them an example real quick of what that might be. One of our products is what we refer to as our One Funnel Away Challenge. And our One Funnel Away Challenge uh, what we basically do is it's $100. And for that $100, they get the opportunity of getting into a 30-day challenge to actually build their first funnel in 30 days. So it's a coaching program. It takes them through it. Uh, we have a five-day lead challenge that's free that leads into this. And then on the, um, the One Funnel Away Challenge, um, in the last month here, um, we've had roughly 50 
58,000 people hit the order form pay or go to the page. So at onefunnelway.com, of that 9.83% of the people are opting in. And of that, uh, basically 25% of those people or, or 1,728 people actually ended up buying the $100 product. Okay. So in that case, um, we then have the very next thing after that is so if you come into the One Funnel Away Challenge, you're getting exposed for this opportunity of, of creating a funnel. Well, the very next thing in a, in a value ladder would be, well, now that I have a funnel, I've got to find some way of getting traffic to that funnel. And so we have a traffic secrets course. And on that one, we have 11.16% of those people who then take that OTO. And that's, uh, that's where we basically get most of the revenue coming back in. So... Uh, out of the 58,000 people who basically hit the page, um, the gross sales on that is 217,000. And what we're really looking at is the average cart value. So the average cart value is $125.99. So in essence, we really could pay up to $125, $126 to acquire that customer. In essence, that would become a break-even funnel. And what did you sell the first, the initial product for? Uh, the, the five day lead challenge. Yes. The first thing that you sold them in the funnel. Uh, so the, actually the first thing is a hundred dollars. It's, it's a hundred dollars for the one funnel away challenge. The book funnel, uh, our dot com secrets book, uh, is one of the books that we end up doing. You land on the, on the book at dot com secrets.com. It's a free plus shipping offer. So you put your, your name, your email address in, you pay $7 and 95 cents. And for that, we actually ship out the book for you. And, in that case, we've had um, roughly 10% uh, of the people actually take that offer. And from there then, so in this case, in the last just over 1,100 people, we then have an order form bump. And the order form bump on this is where they actually get the audio version. And for that, it's 16% of the people actually said, yes, I want the audio book. So they'll pay $37 for the audio book. After that is a one-time offer where we actually have Russell's written three books. And so in the offer, the next thing is, well, you got one book, you probably want the whole box set. And so we have an 8.8% conversion of people buying the entire box nice. set. Uh, and then after that, uh, we then offer them a, a software where they can actually help build out funnels. It's called Funnelytics. And in that case, we have a 4.89% uh, conversion to that price and that price, there's two different offers on there depending on it, but it's uh, basically 125 bucks. So what is your average cart value or your average purchase price? So the average cart value, again, it's a free plus shipping offer. So yeah. it literally costs them nothing at all. Um, it's $48 and six cents. That is amazing. Okay. So monetization so. nation, listen to those numbers real quick. <laughs> this is one of those extreme value moments that David just gave to you. So He's doing a free plus shipping funnel to get people in the door, to hook them, right? And then he makes on average $48 for every order that goes through that. So he can spend $48 to buy a customer, bring them through that funnel, and he now has a new customer in the system that he can sell his software to, that he can sell Funnel Hacking Live, their, their conference to, everything else they sell, he can keep selling to. He's, he's indoctrinating these customers. And if he can buy the customer for less than $48, he gets a customer for free. And if you That's can the whole that, idea. you've got no average, you've got an unlimited advertising budget. Yeah, that's so brilliant. That is one of the, the best marketing strategies I have ever heard. Okay, um, what are the biggest mistakes that you've seen entrepreneurs make in creating sales funnels? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I think the main thing I see a lot of people do is they just give up. Uh, they think, you know what? I tried one funnel and it didn't work, I'm out. And I think there are so many times where we, we've created funnels that just didn't work. The numbers weren't in the, the metrics where we needed them to be. And so for us, it's going back and testing and retweaking and changing and doing whatever we can to, to get to where we need to. Sometimes it's a pricing thing. Sometimes it's a different offer. I think the problem where most, most funnel builders bail out is they just, they, they tried it one time and that was just, they just gave up. 
the biggest mistake most people make is they try to do something that's just not natural or normal. Um, no matter what business you're in, people are accustomed to going through a sales funnel in your business. So you can take your physical business and just take that same process and put it online and get even greater results because you have an opportunity to a larger marketplace. Why should an entrepreneur use specifically ClickFunnels sales funnel software as opposed to other software solutions from your competitors? The main reason for it is you've got the opportunity of seeing the entire customer journey. Uh, and what I mean by that is the whole idea behind this is as a person comes into your funnel, you want to see where they fall out. Uh, take, for example, as far as Shopify, a person comes in and they, there's cart abandonment. You don't know why, and you really can't change things. One of the great things on inside of ClickFunnels is you can actually do a lot of split testing. You can make changes to the actual order form. And so you can now find what are the order forms that are working? What are the things that are successful? Uh, maybe I need to add a picture of the product. Maybe I need to add a video of how to actually complete the order form. All those little tiny tweaks are the things that really have separated ClickFunnels from everything else. But one of the biggest things is the opportunity of, of really merging in all the, the email, all the follow-up funnels based on the customer journey, wherever they're leading. Because now you can go ahead and you can see that they bailed out after they opted in. They didn't even go through the funnel. Well, now you can go ahead and you can create a follow-up sequence to target them specifically on that. Or maybe it was when they had cart abandonment and they left. Or maybe it was when they, only, they didn't buy the OTOs. You can actually have an email that comes back to them and offer a special offer to help them buy that OTO or to find a way of getting greater access to you or to your, whatever your next product or service is. Yeah. Okay. We've explored ClickFunnels, your software and how it can help our audience to become better monetizers themselves. I'd like to now transition a little bit and talk about the ClickFunnels business model itself so that our audience can kind of understand how, how you've built such a successful kind of infopreneurship business, a business selling information products. Uh, that's one thing we teach a lot about. Uh, can you start off by explaining to us what the ClickFunnels value ladder is? Sure. Uh, our value ladder actually starts with a whole bunch of different front end products. Uh, we've mentioned already a, a few of them. Uh, Russell has three different books. And so there's education and that we can bring people in. Um, the other thing is a person who's already used to that education of trying to actually build their, their actual funnel. Well, that would be our one funnel away challenge. And they could then opt into their uh, person who's interested in creating a, a webinar. We have the perfect webinar script. And so we bring an audience from the perfect webinar. Uh, we have a five day lead challenge where a person's trying to generate how to create a lead. We teach them over the next five days, how to actually create that. So we really try to find out what are the front ends based on the audience that we're trying to bring into the software. And we create as many different front ends as we possibly can to then attract that, that marketplace to us. Once they then get into the universe here, uh, we then are approaching them in multiple different ways about how they can actually get access to the software. Our software is a 14 day free trial uh, uh, with a credit card. So it's a 97 or 297. And with that, they also get exposed to a ton of education. Uh, we have a software uh, outside of it's called Funnel Flicks. It's like the Netflix for entrepreneurs where they and get access amazing. to that. I spend so much time <laughs> in that. <laughs> and so that was an additional educational component. They're trying to provide people the tools and the resources that they need uh, from the software. The next things, uh, so it'd be from 97 up to 297 level. Uh, from the 297 level, the next step is what we refer to as our 2CCX coaching program where it's $2,500 as well. <laughs> there you go. It's $2,497 a month. And for that, they get the software included, but they also have the opportunity of, of working with a coach to help build their business. And inside of that, we have three different levels as well. And some amaz amazing education modules that are part of it. That actually is where I see the greatest value. So you've explained most of your value ladder here. You've got also your Funnel Hacking Live, live event. You've got a, a variety of other products as well. But um, a few of your products are one-time. Your event is one-time, your annual event, and, and your books are, are one-time purchases. What percentage of your business comes from recurring revenue, like your software or the two CCX coaching program? About 85% of our revenue right now comes from monthly recurring revenue, and the other 15% comes from other physical products. 
or yeah. other products. Okay. So why has ClickFunnels built their business around recurring revenue? And what are the benefits of that? <laughs> it's like a drug. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that no matter what business you're in, the whole idea behind it is to get recurring revenue. And you've seen this model, no matter you've been bombarded these days by every single network out there these days, whether it's Disney or Discovery or Hulu or Apple. I mean, every single person is understanding the importance of of recurring revenue. Uh, it allows you to actually typically reduce the price and then to get people in. And the whole idea is you're providing value on a monthly basis. And the idea behind it is to get them to consume that content. The more they consume it, the more they want it, the more they use it, and the, the stickier a software or any product gets. And you see the same thing happening. Uh, there's been a lot of boxes that come are shipped on a monthly basis. Um, you take a look at really any business these days, they're all trying to find some way of adding some sort of a recurring revenue piece to it. And the primary reason for it is it stabilizes your business. It takes all the peaks and valleys out of it and allows you to actually scale a business. The hardest part, uh, I remember when I had an agency and it was really a frustrating thing where I'd be on the hunt trying to find as many clients and then I get this great spike, but then I had to spend all my time fulfilling. And it became really difficult because now all my time was fulfilling. I couldn't go get new clients. And so personally, I have these ups and downs in my, in my revenue. And it was harder to scale a business. I saw the same thing at different times and different businesses I've had. Uh, same thing was in the mortgage business. Until you automate that and you systemize it where you've got enough of a consistent lead flow where you can continue to, to generate the revenues that you need. That's the whole idea behind any yeah. sort of a revenue model. Russell teaches that until you have a list, you don't have a business. <laughs> ClickFunnels has a huge list. I, I believe you have over a million entrepreneurs on your list. Um, can you give us some secrets and strategies of what are the most effective ways to build a huge list? Uh, the best thing right now is go to five day lead challenge. And the whole thing teaches you exactly how to build a list. Uh, so the easiest thing, it's free, go to five day lead challenge. Uh, but the main things they talk about in there is really all the things behind how to create that list. A lot of it comes down to making sure you have some sort of an offer, something that no matter if you're exchanging an email, uh, you have to sell things that are free just as hard as you have to sell something that's has a price tag to it. And I think the biggest mistake a lot of people think is that it, because it's free, I can just give it away and people are going to want it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, so the whole idea behind building a list is to create an offer that has value, that has greater value for a person to actually exchange their email for whatever you're offering. Are, for most of the emails you've gathered to your list, have you gathered them by selling something or have you gathered them by giving something away for free? We try to do as much of it by selling. Uh, that's, I, that's more my preference. Okay. Uh, you are an enormous SaaS company. I, I believe based on what I've heard that you, you are now valued at over a billion dollars as primarily a SaaS company, a software as a service. What are the biggest challenges and benefits and secrets of running such a successful SaaS company? I can tell you, I think the, the biggest thing to really pay attention to is how you scale. I think that uh, no matter what business you're in, you go through the small, middle and large size business. And every time you cross over one of those thresholds, it brings on a whole new set of ch challenges and problems. Uh, one of those big challenges is, is really scaling and de developing your team. Um, for us, as when we first started, all of us were entrepreneurs. We were in a very startup phase where we, none of us minded spending you know, 24 hours a day doing whatever it was going to take to build. As you start growing and scaling your business, a lot of the employees you have, they don't want to work 24 hours a day just because <laughs> they don't have as much passion behind it. But at the same time, uh, we were very fortunate as we grew the software uh, that our first employees actually were customers. And uh, we had the opportunity of growing and scaling with them. As we've continued to grow, one of the main things we've taken a look at um, from a SaaS company is really trying to find and I think no matter what business you're in is you really, you go from the idea of, of just having a passion and, and just wanting to get your product and service out to then really understanding the importance of metrics. Funnel Hacking Live is the best digital marketing conference I've ever attended. And, and I've spoken at these conferences. I've, I've been to a lot of them and, uh, 
it, it is so transformational. It at least has been for, for me and my businesses. Uh, what are some of the secrets and strategies that, that ClickFunnels has used for running such a successful live event? Wow, great question. Uh, for us, one of the most important things is to understand the choreography behind the event. Um, for us, it's, it needs to be much more than just education. There is a ton of entertainment. Uh, there has to be a high energy level. We've got uh, typically anywhere from this year, probably about 3,500 people live in a, an event room. Uh, we've had up to you know, almost 5,000 people in the past. Uh, typically, we start off every one of our events with a charitable contribution on the very first day. Um, and there's, there's a ton of reasons behind it. Uh, the very first one is it allows us... So for, we started this when we started ClickFunnels. And for every funnel that got published, we decided we'd donate a dollar to... At the time, it was Village Impact. It's now World... Or it used to be World Teacher Aid. It's now Village Impact. And so we've donated over a million dollars to to Village Impact over the last seven years. And in addition to that, we also have worked with Operation Underground Railroad. Those are the two things that we spend a lot of our time on. Uh, we have a, a company passion that we refer to as liberate and educate. And the whole idea behind that is how do we liberate and educate entrepreneurs? In addition to that, we then help have two different charities. One that we've spent a bunch of time to liberate kids from child and sex slavery, as well as educate those kids in Africa right now uh, in Village Impact. So That's the idea behind it, we have been super passionate about it. So because of our passion, we always start our event off with that. Uh, there's, a, from a psychology standpoint, a couple of things that take place. One is it allows us to point back to wherever the sales table is going to be in the back of the room. Uh, people then have the opportunity of donating back there. They get used to that. Uh, no matter what event you're going to be in, I think it's important to help to have a cause that you're passionate behind. Thank you so much, Dave, for joining us on the show today and sharing your stories and insights with us. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, a value ladder is a lineup of value we offer to our customers at each step of their customer journey. At each step, the value and cost increases. Number two, the best way to determine what value to provide is by first determining our core offer. Once we have our main offer, we can work backwards from there. Number three, there are many different ways to provide value to our customers, such as books, courses, software, membership sites, and events. Number four, we can choose to sell our offers as OTOs or one-time offers, or as subscriptions, to, or even to give value for free in exchange for customer information. Number five, we have to work just as hard to sell things that are free as we do to sell something with a price tag on it. And number six, we can implement different strategies to encourage our customers to take our offers, such as using discounts, order form bumps, and promotions. Number seven, once we have our value ladder completed, one of the best things we can do to ensure its success is look at our metrics and data. We need to look at the metrics to find ways we can improve our sales funnels, conversion rates, increase customer opt-in rates, and optimize our customer lifetime value. If you want to learn more about Dave or connect with him, you can find him on LinkedIn, visit his company's website at clickfunnels.com or go to secretstrilogy.com. And there's links to each of these sites in the blog post for this episode at monetizationnation.com. Do you want to be a better digital monetizer? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, you can get a free passion marketing ebook and learn how to be a top priority for your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number three, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel. Number four, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher. Number five, you can follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. What value do you offer to your customers in your value ladder? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in creating and executing your value ladder. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.